But by the end of the 19th century, Thackeray's Regency London had become a darker, dirtier place. In between, Charles Dickens had described a city that was acquisitive and hungry, but where there was still goodness to be found. In the 1890s, Arthur Conan Doyle drew a picture of London where crime pervaded the streets and many people lived in its shadows. London is a great cesspool into which all the loungers and idlers of the empire are irresistibly drained. What was needed now was a hero who understood the dark side of human life as well as any criminal. What Gotham City is to Batman, London is to Sherlock Holmes. It's down these teeming streets he goes at night disguised. It's these crimes and conspiracies that require all the power of his insight and deduction to solve. Powers that verge sometimes on the inhuman. Sherlock Holmes is the novel's first superhero. Watson! Holmes has the resources to combat all manner of criminal challenge, physical as well as intellectual. In the fight against the criminal darkness, Holmes brings something entirely new, his scientific mind. Suffice it to say that I know as little about Mr. J. Bears Wilson as you do yourself, beyond the obvious facts. That he has done manual labor at some time, that he takes snuff, that he has been to China, and that he has done a considerable amount of writing lately. Oh, in the name of good fortune, did you know all that, Mr. Holmes? Sherlock Holmes's genius is to take a murky tangle of threatening events and by the brilliance of his deductive intelligence to flood it with light. It's all about illumination. But in Holmes, there is a thin line between light and dark, between insight and something more like madness. There's someone out there to get us, whether it's, you know, the beastly Han or Professor Moriarty or whoever it is. The forces of darkness are assembling out there and we don't quite understand what it is we have to get to grips with. We live in worlds of appearances and there is a great yen inside us to want to kind of unmask appearances and actually to somehow unthread the complicated nature of public as, and social dissembling. And Holmes is the person who, who's always kind of, has this religious quality of unmasking about him that is absolutely out of a particular time and period. And, and it is the relationship between logic and lunacy that he puts together. That's what does it for me. Holmes is an obsessive. And if the criminal underworld doesn't distract him enough, he finds other addictions. As a schoolboy reader, I hero-worshipped Sherlock Holmes and conveniently overlooked the more shadowy side of his character. But the fact is that he's a chronic depressive. He seems incapable of forming even the most elementary emotional attachments, and he can barely face the world unless it contains some lurid crime for him to solve. Give me problems. Give me work. Give me the most abstruse cryptogram, the most intricate analysis, and I'm in my proper atmosphere. Then I can dispense with artificial stimulants. But I abhor the dull routine of existence. I crave mental exaltation. Holmes is a hero whose thought processes are complex, but whose solutions are simple. A popular hero 
for the new genre of crime fiction. I think it would be very hard to be more of a hero than Holmes. You want to read another story, not really for the stories, although they are very clever and some of them are brilliant, but for Sherlock Holmes. It, it, he is the case of a character, of a, 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 a work of fiction that nobody is altogether happy with it until he's back on the scene. You don't really want to read about what Watson is doing when Holmes isn't there, but as soon as he, this heroic figure, is back again, everything takes a turn for the better. Such was the force field of Holmes as a character that readers began to believe he was a real human being. It's the curious case of the character who outgrew his author. I've written a good deal more about him than I ever intended to do, but my hand has been rather forced by kind friends who continually wanted to know more. And so it is that this monstrous growth <laughs> has come out out of what was really a comparatively small seed. Now, the curious thing is how many people there are in the world who are perfectly convinced that he is a living human being. Conan Doyle decided to take action. And so, on the 4th of May, 1891, he did what every criminal had failed to do. He killed off Sherlock Holmes. In a fight with his arch enemy, Professor Moriarty, Holmes appears to fall to his death. The public were inconsolable. Mourning bands were worn in the city. The foreign press was full of it. In the end, the furore caused by Holmes's death was so great that Conan Doyle was forced to bring him back from the dead. Like all superheroes, Sherlock Holmes could never die. But Holmes would be the last fictional hero to take on the world and win.